Hello, I'm Alan Gerstel. And I'm Laurel Sauer. Welcome and thanks for joining us for Heritage, a series of exciting and unique local programs originally produced by WXEL's partners at the Education Network. Now, if you're a regular viewer of Heritage, then you know we have covered many stories that focus on local history. We brought you the story of Laura Woodward, a landscape artist whose paintings had an influence on Henry Flagler. And you watched The Last Egret, which told about the hunting of birds for their feathers, which were prized on ladies' hats a century ago. That craze for feathers nearly wiped out the population of egrets and other waiting birds. And you witnessed the centennial of the Palm Beach County school system and the county itself. Well, tonight we focus on the environment as we explore the riches of the Pine Jog Environmental Educational Center. Now, when we look around us, we see massive developments that have gobbled up our natural surroundings and replaced them with homes and commercial buildings. Now, that's a good thing because we all need places to live and to work, right? But at the same time, we have limited our access to the beauty and the wonder of the environment that nurtures us all. And that's why places like Pine Jog are so important. The Pine Jog Environmental Education Center is one of the oldest nature centers in the country. It came into existence 50 years ago. Its mission is to develop educational programs which foster an awareness and appreciation of the natural world around us. It serves tens of thousands of students, teachers, and families each year. Now, Pine Jog is partners with Florida Atlantic University and with the School District of Palm Beach County. Its main location preserves 135 acres of natural Florida habitat for everyone to enjoy in the heart of the county, surrounded by urban neighborhoods. And when students come on field trips, they become fascinated and are taught a sense of stewardship toward the planet Earth and all its inhabitants. In fact, their hands-on experience with nature at Pine Jog inspires some students to study the environmental sciences and make it their life work. So, now let's take a look at Pine Jog, the first 50 years. Long before ecology became a common word in our vocabulary and concern about protecting the environment piqued the public interest, an idea sprouted in the minds of a prominent stockbroker banker and his wife. The year was 1946. Mr. and Mrs. Alfred G. K. purchased a parcel of land known as Pine Jog Plantation from the Lake Worth Drainage District, land that was formerly owned by Henry Flagler. Mrs. K., our founder, was a member of the Garden Club of Palm Beach and they've always considered um, themselves a very important part of what goes on here and we've had a really important relationship from then from the first day our you know mrs k set us up at first the k's used the 150 acres of land to grow flowers fruits and vegetables but they also formulated long-term plans for the property that would have a true impact on the future of palm beach county before the 60s palm beach county was a very quiet, I would say a sunny seaside kind of place. People went to the beach. There wasn't much industry here at all. It was more community where tourists came in. It was also a community where young people needed positive diversions. She was interested in the young students. Uh, she had an idea that uh, if they were interested in nature, they wouldn't, wouldn't be so much juvenile crime and so forth. They'd be thinking about the animals and the plants. That thought process was spelled out in this 1947 paper written by Mrs. K. In increasing numbers, the magazine articles and items in our daily press report a mounting tide of vandalism, generally quite senseless, which is performed by delinquents of all ages. Surely, if an interest in the living world around them could be awakened in our young citizens, they would soon lose interest and incentive in perpetrating further acts of vandalism. The Kays owned an experimental garden near Boynton Beach and had a close relationship with Dr. David Fairchild, the founder of Fairchild Tropical Gardens in Miami. She 
was a very, very gracious person. She was very set in her ways. She was very strong-willed and strong-minded about what she wanted and how to get it. And she was a very strong lady and very independent woman. The Kays envisioned a creative teaching center and outdoor classroom that would draw students and teachers. In 1960, under the stewardship of the Florida Audubon Society, the first phase of the Pine Jog Conservation Education Center was built as a way of what the Kays called opening windows to the natural world. I think uh, people who just thought it was too expensive or that we should uh, sell this property and move, move it out farther where the, plant, the acreage would be cheaper. But uh, we thought we should stay once we had it because people feel this is far enough out to, to get to anyway, so I'm going farther. The response to Pine Jog was immediate. Mrs. K wrote, Its amazing success can only be explained by the fact that it must have filled an aching void. In no time, teachers were telephoning to ask when they might bring their children to Pine Jog, and without exception, departing children were asking, When may we come back again? This was the place that they could be children. They could ask questions, they could analyze, they could observe. They could record, and then when they got back to school, they could take whatever they did here and have another discussion in the classroom about it. So it really presented an ideal time and situation for students. During the first few years, trails were cleared so students could walk through the sanctuary, and two main buildings were constructed for classrooms and offices. By the second summer of operation, Florida State University offered teacher credits for courses completed at Pine Jog, as its reputation quickly grew and the students kept coming. Those early years were very much, I would call, our nature study years. Um, and, and as part of that, you know, we would, we would show children uh, snakes uh, that they could touch. And, but again, within that, explaining the role of a snake in the natural community. So it wasn't just for dramatic uh, effect, although it had that effect as well. Pine Jog's value became immediately apparent to the Palm Beach County School Board, known then as the Board of Public Instruction. Superintendent Howell Watkins wrote to elementary principals on December 15, 1961, that a valuable new service is being offered to the children of Palm Beach County, which will greatly enrich their learning opportunities in science. Part of our job here is to turn people onto nature so that they love it and then want to take care of it. And we all know that our economy in Florida is based on you know, how, we, how well we take care of our natural areas and our natural resources. And you know, our quality of life is related to it. Pat Welch is Pine Jog's longest serving director. She served from 1987 until 2009. The first director was Rex Conyers, who shepherded the wildlife sanctuary through its early years. He was a nationally known leader in the field of conservation education. William Partington followed and Richard Tillis then picked up the reins. Pine Jog board member Jane Hart was a teacher in the 1960s. We always looked for other opportunities and places that we could introduce students to new ideas and concepts. And that was really when I first became aware of Pine Jog because the students liked the idea of having a field trip because it was away from the classroom. And back then, we were limited in our ability to do laboratories. So we took them out to places like Pine Jog. First time I came with students, they were amazed that this land was here. Not that they hadn't seen empty lands in Florida. Most of them had seen empty land, but at, during those years, that empty land was being converted into cement areas. 1970 was an auspicious year for Pine Jog. Control was transferred from the Florida Audubon Society to Florida Atlantic University, which had been offering courses on the site as early as 1965. Pine Jog also cemented the relationship with the Palm Beach County School District. We've had a contract with uh, the school system since the early 70s, and um, it 
it initiated as a contract to provide uh, experiential programs here at Pine Jog or at other sites around the county for school age learners. Uh, the contract began with uh, third grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, and certain high school classes. They had an opportunity to, using the theme of the environment, teach language arts, social studies, math, history, you name it, because kids love the out of doors. And that was just a natural springboard to enhance their, not only their learning, but the enthusiasm for the learning. Over the years, the relationship has evolved into helping teachers learn more about the environment that they can then pass down to students. So even today, our contract with the district is professional development for teachers. Um, we provide a, a variety of workshops, summer institutes, uh, to help teachers with uh, methods and materials for bringing environmental education into the classroom. Pine Jog has also been the recipient of a number of awards over the years. In 1973, it received the Founders Award through the sponsorship of the Palm Beach chapter of the Garden Club of America. Every week, the Garden Club Pine Jog Committee had a meeting at Pine Jog, and all the staff were at that meeting, and we presented reports, and Mrs. Kay was always at every meeting and would almost always go out and walk what we called Mrs. Kay's Trail, which was, um, you know, developed for her to enjoy. And um, it was really nice to see a donor, you know, donor founder that involved with Pine Jog. Palm Beach County experienced explosive growth in the 1970s, and Pine Jog increased its programs to meet the growing need. Adult education and teacher education programs were expanded, and the Pine Jog staff hosted summer camps so that children could truly immerse themselves in the natural surroundings. The unique thing here was, in the middle of the city, you had this vast, vast amount of natural land. So we were very, very fortunate that the Kays and the people that followed her thought enough about what to do with the land that they willed it to a system that would enrich and enhance school children. Pine Jog has been known from its early days as a place where people could come to experience nature. But as far back as the early 1980s, its educators wanted to do more than just lead students on a walk in the woods. We expanded our programs to be much more conceptual as opposed to informational. And in teaching concepts like interrelationships of plants and animals and energy flow of uh, the sun cycling, through plants and animals. So school field trips began to take on a whole new dimension, one of involving students in their surroundings by giving them hands-on projects. I think also my role has been um, to, to keep abreast of the research about what makes environmental education good education, and to always make sure that in our our programs as they were developed and delivered, that we were staying on that cutting edge of what were best practices in environmental education. And um, with the grant from the MacArthur Foundation, we did a lot of research, you know, into what research is out there that might give us some guidance. And we learned from that research that reaching children at the earliest age possible is your best window of instilling values and um, a sense of caring. So we began to focus more on the elementary grade levels. This day, a group of second, third, and fourth graders from Northboro Elementary will experience the best practices in environmental education as they get hands-on lessons in the value of protecting our environment. Okay, guys, come on, we're gonna head over here. I'm gonna take you to your first station for your training. With a busload of students split into three groups, Susan Tulth begins to involve her students with tales about Native Americans, mixed with a little bit of mystery. 
Native Americans knew things about how to live with the land. They, had, they knew lessons, and as children, they were taught lessons about how to live with the land that some of us have forgotten. So you are all going to be working to discover these lost lessons. And in doing so, that's the challenge for you. But in doing so, it's going to help you become a member of a very special team that we have here at Pine Jog and all through Palm Beach County. We have a team of students that are called members of the home team because the earth is our home. And people that know how that know that and know how to care for it, we we call them members of our home team. To help them earn the right to be a member of the home team, each student gets a pouch with a handbook, pencil, and secret decoder in it. Then it's off down the trail to a clearing in the woods. Your first challenge today is you're going to look at, like I said, some of the ways that plants and animals depend on each other. And you're going to do this first by solving some riddles. Plants depend on me to spread seeds from the berries I eat. I depend on plants for my nest. What am I? Okay. Oh, Jessica. A bird. All right, we got a couple more here. Let's see what I've got. Plants depend on me to spread pollen from flower to flower. I depend on flowers for their sweet nectar. With all their hands up, it's evident that these students are enthusiastic about what they're learning. There was one a student that said to me one time when I was leading a field trip, she said, do you get paid for this? And I said, yes, isn't that wonderful to have a job that you love, that you're getting paid for? And they were asking about that because they were thinking about that maybe as a possibility that they would grow up and become a teacher like that. So what, what greater compliment can you get than that? But the Pine Jog Environmental Education Center is much more than just a place for school field trips. It earned a Garden Club of America Founders Fund Award in 2009 for the restoration of the center's native prairie. It also offers a year-long fellowship program for Palm Beach County school students. I didn't realize how much I cared about the environment until I took the fellowship. I always kind of had an interest, that's why I decided to do it. But summer was really cool because I learned about local issues that we were having here. And then I also realized how much I like educating other people about it. I really enjoy coming here to the after-school program and helping the kids and um, being able to teach them something that I think is really important. It's, I mean, it's been a really positive experience. I. I've learned a lot about sustainability and like not, not just going green because it seems like a lot of people just think like oh going green recycling and you know that's all that's all we have to do and we're contributing to saving the planet. Students who wish to pursue environmental studies can now also apply to FAU's graduate program in environmental education a program that Pine Jog was instrumental in starting. Okay, we've arrived at our very first station to become home team members. We are going to work our way through the station called Jobs. Now that seems odd to have a job station in the middle of the woods, but believe it or not, there are so many jobs going on right around us. In this part of the forest, there are so many plants doing this job. Let's read this board together, shall we? Making shade is a job that's done, then plants and animals get out of the sun. All right, we just found a bunch of shade makers in just this part of the forest. Let's see what we're going to look for next. Food makers. Can everyone help me read the board? Making food is a job to do. It gives animals plenty to chew. Okay, so we've got to find plants that do the job of making food. In addition to students, Pine Jog has long been a leader in educating teachers. Each summer, the center offers summer institutes for Palm Beach County educators. Pine Jog calls it a two-way street because the environmental education teachers receive is standards-based. It, it's been a real partnership in, uh, in that we've tried to craft programs, too, that will help teachers meet their needs in terms of educating students. Uh, and then at the same time using the school district and our teacher partners to accomplish our mission. So I would like to think that over this 50 years 
we've really complemented each other's mission. All right, so what I want to do is get all your different jobs. I'm going to record them all down on this board. So let's see, what was your first job? What do we have first? Shade, maker. shade makers. Nine shade oh, first we have food makers. All right, well, we'll do shade first. All right. Skylar, how many shade makers did you have? Um, we had 10. 10. The lesson in shade makers takes on a more traditional classroom approach when Tracy asked the students to help total up the number of shade makers they found. All right. Now, guess what we get to do? It's my favorite thing to do. Math in the woods. Plus one. 18. Plus eight. 30, 28. 26. 26. Plus seven. 33. All right, good job. So I write my three. Write my three. So I got three plus one. Four. Plus one. Six. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Twelve. Good job. One hundred and twenty-three shade makers. My goodness. There's another riddle. Get down on all fours for a te treasure that's tiny. The greatest might be a speck that is shiny. All right, so hold on. I've got a tool for you guys. So each of you get to use a magnifying glass and see if you can find a small treasure that's shiny. And there's no right answer. It could be a couple different things. So use your tool. Have you guys used magnifying glasses before? Yeah. yeah. yeah? All right. So you know if you put it on an object and then slowly pull it away, it'll get bigger so you can see it better. It might be helpful. It might help you find the treasure. So off they go, faces to the ground, using magnifying glasses to look at the soil and ground cover like they have never done before. The search for the treasure ends when the youngsters find a box hidden in the underbrush. You guys want to know what it is? Yeah. All right. So what it is, ta-da! The earth, exactly. So we couldn't put the whole earth in this box. So we have this little ball to represent the earth. And this shows that this is our greatest treasure. Because do we have more than one earth? No. No, this is the only earth we have. So home team members know that we have to take extra special care of it because it's the only earth we have. And all those things you were talking about, all those amazing treasures are all on our earth. This experience in the woods has a positive impact on the youngsters who responded very favorably to their experience. That would probably be the jobs when you had the clicker to find all the homes and um, shade spots and all that stuff. We had to find stuff and we had to look at stuff in a different point of view. Like we had to, um, well, figure out what was in our hand and we had to um, see what it's like to look, to, um, look to look with dragonflies eyes and what's the third thing and we had to find something shiny it was fun and we learned a lot about nature and plants and we learned a lot about how they live the most valuable thing is not money and that it is our earth the opening of pine jog elementary on the site added even more to the partnership between the environmental education center and the school district both the school and the center were named LEED Certified Gold Facilities in 2008, the first in the state. The LEED certification means that the buildings are designed, constructed, and operated as high-performance green buildings. They provide a model for students and visitors alike in how to conserve our resources while remaining energy efficient and providing indoor environmental quality. Certainly uh, now, with the advent of uh, Pine Jog Elementary and our partnership with them and with the school district in that uh, I think our next 50 years offer us that opportunity to to be that place where people can come to to learn about how they can live more sustainable lifestyles. Now, Alan, clearly there are some wonderful things happening at the Pine Jog Environmental Educational Center. Those young students seem to be so enraptured by what they experience walking through the woods and learning about nature. Laurel, you really had to be there and follow them down their paths of discovery to truly understand how meaningful the experience was for each and every one of them. We tried, but there's no way that we could have captured all the wonderful moments of discovery for our viewers to share. And keep in mind, many of these kids have only been exposed to concrete playgrounds and sidewalks. They've never experienced anything like Pine Jog before, 
So the field trips are really a life-altering event for them. And I imagine many of us adults, too, have faced the same limitations of living in just urban environments. So I would think Pine Jog would be a terrific educational experience for adults, too. It certainly would, Laurel. We'd like to thank Pine Jog for sharing its wonderful resource with all of us. For WXEL, I'm Laurel Sauer. And I'm Alan Gerstel. We'll see you again next time on Heritage. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free to email us at heritage at wxel.org.